In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at two momentum bouncing questions to where we have a ball that is moving towards a wall and then being bounced and reflected back at five meters per second. And if it has an impact time of 0.12 seconds against the wall, what is the force being applied to that object in order to reflect it back at five meters per second? The second one is slightly more complicated with a ball coming in at 30 degrees with a perfectly inelastic collision, causing it to go back at one meter per second at that same angle of 30 degrees. And then we're going to solve for the impulse, which is known as J or Delta P for this second scenario. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first one. So when taking a look at a question that it has to deal with momentum, impulse and bouncing, the key thing is going to be direction. So in my picture, I'm just going to go ahead and say anything to the right is positive anything to the left is negative. And the second thing I'm going to say is everything up is positive and everything down is negative. Now it's really important to make sure um, you label your picture and make sure everything is um, properly labeled with a positive or negative because that's one of the big determining factors in getting the correct solution. So I'm going to go ahead and go into my drawing and then make sure I leave this one because it's positive. It's going to the right. This one is going to the left. So I'm going to go ahead and put a negative next to it. Okay, I'm going to finish solving this one first, and then we'll come down to this one and break this one down in a little bit more detail. So we are going to find the change in momentum. And the change in momentum is mass times delta V, which is basically the final velocity minus the initial. And that is the impulse and the impulse can be also found by the force applied and the time of impact. Now, as long as you plug in those correct numbers that we labeled over here and we have the two kilograms for the mass, then it should be fairly simple from there. So we have two kilograms for the mass of the object. We have a final velocity is negative five of negative five, excuse me, minus the initial velocity of five. Okay, now, if you forgot to add the negative sign here, then this one would be positive and then this entire thing would be zero and that would change your problem very significantly. And that would equal the force times the time of impact of 0.12 seconds. So we have um, negative five minus five, which is negative 10, negative 10 times two is negative 20. And then we finish off by one final step of taking negative 20 divided by 0 0.12 seconds. And then we get our final answer. Negative 166.6 repeating. So I'm going to round it off to 0.7 newtons. Okay, so there's our first one. Um, again, the key component to solving this one correctly is making sure you put the little negative sign for something that is going in the opposite direction. So taking a look at our second one, we have one meter per second going at a 30 degree angle towards the wall. So we have a vertical component going downwards and we have a horizontal component going to the right. So it has an X and Y component. And then same thing with the bottom one. Um, the bottom one has an X component coming out this way. And then it has a Y component going downward as well. So if we analyze the problem, we want to take a look at each of the different components. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull my triangle out and my triangle will look something like this. We have a 30 degree angle and then we have a momentum of five because it's five times one mass times velocity gives us a momentum of five kilogram meters per second. So that's going to be the hypotenuse of our triangle. And then if we go ahead and use sine, we can do sine 
of 30 degrees equals the opposite side, which is over here, divided by our hypotenuse. And then we're going to multiply both sides by 5. And that's going to give us our y component. And our y component is going to be 2.5 kilogram meters per second. So we'll see that's the momentum in the y direction. Now in the x direction, um, we're going to use cosine so that we can use the adjacent side over here. We're going to do the same sort of thing. We're going to go with cosine of 30 degrees equals the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse of five kilogram meters per second. Same thing, multiply both sides by five, just as we did mathematically for the other part. And then we're gonna get a momentum, the X component of momentum of 8.66. Now, when you go ahead and take a look at each of those components, we're gonna do that separately. Um, we're going to take a look at the y components first so the nice part about it is that this triangle and this triangle are basically the same thing but the arrows are in slightly different directions so what i mean by that is if you take a look at this vertical component it's the it's pointing in the downward direction and then so is this one so those ones are both actually um going, going to be considered negative 2.5 because earlier we said everything up is positive and everything down is negative. So now if we want the change in momentum, the change in momentum, which is the impulse, is equal to the final momentum minus the initial. The final momentum is negative 2.5 kilogram meters per second, and the initial is also 2.5 kilogram meters per second. So the total change in momentum or the impulse in the y direction is going to be zero. There is none. Now for the x direction, it's going to be slightly different because we still have the bottom part of the triangle that is going to be the same number, but one's pointing to the right and one's pointing to the left. So this triangle above here has a positive 8.66 kilogram meters per second. And then the one going to the left is negative 8.66. So if we do the change in momentum or the impulse for the stuff in the X direction, then we have an arrow going to the left, this one over here, for our final. So that's negative 8.66. And then a minus our initial one, which was going to the right at positive 8.66. So the change in momentum for the object in the x direction and overall is 17.32 kilogram meters per second. Now, typically with bouncing, there is going to be a bigger change in momentum because if it's coming in with a positive 8.66, then the wall has to decrease that momentum to zero and then push it out in the opposite direction and give it an additional 8.66 in the other direction. So it's basically double of what this is for your delta P. So I hope that was helpful in helping you analyze and calculate a one-dimensional and two-dimensional collision with a wall with some bouncing and some changing in direction. Thank you for watching and listening.